Well, how would you feel if police officers swarmed your house with guns and then you later found out that the call for help was a hoax? Our swatting investigation is getting momentum for a possible change in the law. Lee Searcy explains in tonight's LEX 18 investigates. Keep your hands up. Imagine if that happened to you. Suddenly your quiet home bombarded with flashing lights and officers ordering you out of the house. Who's all in the house? I walked out the front door with my with my hands up. Um, and that's when, you know, they started screaming at me, hands higher, hands higher. So then I went outside, um, still surrounded by police officers that had their, gun, their guns drawn. Um, and I started saying, what, what's going on? What's happening? Oh my gosh, what is this? What happened is a prank called swatting. That's when someone calls in a false emergency to get a response from a SWAT team. The individual here reported a fake homicide at the couple's home. Central dispatch. I just shot my mom. Where are you? I want to kill myself. Don't do that. Why, why? Don't do that. It sent Scott County Sheriff's deputies and other first responders rushing to the scene in what could have led to someone being shot or killed. I was petrified. The couple wants Kentucky lawmakers to make swatting a felony. Assault isn't a joke. And legislation needs to show that this is not acceptable that laws have to change. Scott County Sheriff Tony Hampton says he's already talked to two lawmakers about it. I think maybe at least if we could make this a felony in Kentucky, we could deter it from happening. This is the second time it's happened to us since I've been sheriff and I'm pretty sure it's happened to Georgetown City Police two if not three times. And I listened to this call that, that happened and it was very, very disturbing. Arlington, Texas Assistant Police Chief Kevin Colby is a retired Dallas FBI agent who led the cyber squad. He knows a thing or two about the dangers of swatting. I can tell you as a state and local agency of a city of 400,000, I mean, we're getting six to 10 a year. So if we're getting six to 10 a year, you kind of do your math and you really look at it. We're in the thousands, thousands a year uh, of swatting calls that are occurring around the United States. But here's the reality. Swatting in general comes with few consequences. This would be a misdemeanor in Kentucky for falsely reporting an incident. In 2019, Wisconsin lawmakers made swatting a class one felony if someone's found guilty of the severe prank. The more that these subjects are identified, uh, prosecuted and arrested with serious time, um, you know, that's that's one solution. Just come on out, baby. Until then, the victims who've lived through it try to get over it. Obviously, right. you're, you're alive. We have a thousand things that went right that night, and it would have only taken one thing to go wrong, and this would have been a totally different story. In Scott County, Lee Searcy, LEX 18 News. At the federal level, there is currently no specific anti-swatting statute, although one was first proposed back in 2015. Officials have used other related laws to prosecute swatting suspects successfully, including obstruction of justice, interstate threats or extortion, and computer misuse. Colby, the retired FBI agent featured in Lee's report, says that it's difficult to know the true amount of swatting cases in the U.S. yearly. He says that because swatting isn't a category that's reported and recorded in the FBI's database of crime statistics.